we've talked about these spread concepts being built in for the offense. We look at the line, and it's primarily all pass protector O-linemen. It's a veteran line now, which is really yes. there to help protect Allen, Big right, deal. from a communication standpoint. You've got two veteran running backs who know how to keep your quarterback upright. Right? So what are realistic targets for Allen this year? Subscribe now, and we will see you at Thurman's 34 Rush, April 25th and 26th for the NFL Draft. Josh Allen Statson for 2019. I'm going to go with 3,800 yards passing, 600 yards rushing, 35 total touchdowns. Whoa! Senior optimistic. You realize that the leading receiver for the Bills had, like, what, Four touchdowns. <laughs> Notice I said 35 total touchdowns. Oh, well, yeah. He may run for 15 of those. So you're talking the offense has <laughs> 35 total touchdowns? No, Inc him. No, him. He's accounted. Rushing and passing, he's got 35 oh, man, touchdowns. That's really optimistic, man. Listen, it's not as insane when you think that's <clears throat> just, just more than two a game, which is what the Bills are planning on doing. Mm -hmm. You get his veteran laid in line. You get these wide receivers. He has, if you looked at the starting day lineup, mm -hmm. minus Peter, Obviously, yeah. of the Bills in 2018 versus what possibly yeah. we're not done yet. Totally different. What this, co completely different. You seem to have an improvement at every single position. Even a 2018 Josh Allen versus a 2019 Josh Allen, mm -hmm. he's going to be more improved. Yeah. You got two veteran running backs, like you said, that are going to they're going to help him. You know, they breaks the huddle. Gore and McCoy will tell them certain things they're looking for mm -hmm. on that play. You're going to have a line that's going to know what to do. So when Morris is directing traffic up there, they know what's going to happen. You don't have a rookie guard and teller. You don't have uh, Mills and Miller on the right side, which were just having trouble all year. Dawkins is going to be another year under his belt. You have all these wide receiver weapons that are going to go on. He's going to try to run more spread concepts. Dayball, hopefully, will make in-game adjustments a little bit better because we did talk about his quality control is phenomenal. Yeah. His getting into a game is great. Now, with the experience that's going to happen between Allen and all these guys, and hopefully the chemistry develops, he's going to have – he can do in-game adjustments himself. I want to know how many times – and we'll know early. We'll know early. We're going to know it early in weeks one, not this past the preseason, weeks one, two, and three. If you see Allen start to change plays, mm -hmm. if they actually give him the ability this year to right. change plays, that will be the tipping point for me. I may have to rescind my – I bet, but I think he's gonna have I think he's gonna have close to combined passing and rushing himself about forty four hundred yards. I think he's gonna combine for thirty five total offensive touchdowns. Well see that's what's so fascinating to me is the you know, we talk often about quarterbacks as they develop, they have to get that, you know, ability to call line protection changes, right? Mm -hmm. They have to be able to keep themselves upright. With the line that they built, they're depending on the line to really take care of a lot of that. Point, yes, right. Yes, yes. So they're taking that stress of development off of him and letting him again focus on what's happening out on the field. That's it. They're like, you you just worry about what's happening out there yeah. as far as routes go. You just worry about reading that coverage. Don't worry about reading the pass rush. However, Don't he does have that. to be conscious of what the calls are for the line. Sure, he does have to know yeah. if it's a one, two, or three, where this pressure is coming from, and all other stuff. Um, the thing about it that I think about is interesting. Why I it's a little bit optimistic. I understand that. You talk, you think, you think about look at Patty Mahomes. Uh -huh. He has Reed there. He threw for fifty touchdowns. So what I'm essentially saying is that Josh Allen in year two compared to Mahomes in year two, because Mahomes just didn't play very much in year one. Uh -huh. He's going to have one touchdown less than Mahomes a game. Now that's incredibly optimistic. However, yeah. that's Reed versus Dable. He will account for another touchdown. The rules of the game changed as the season went on because it's they finally learned the type of player that Allen was. You know, they didn't plan on starting him. No. So they had Peterman, and then Allen ends up in there. Then Allen ends up getting hurt, and then you bring Allen back, and then you could start learning about what kind of player he really is. Yeah. So his 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 year really started after he got after hurt. after he got hurt. Yeah. Because then he was just a doughy eye white. Oh, mm -hmm. what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Even though he had some great plays, they were yep. predetermined plays. It mm -hmm. wasn't like he was reading anything. 
Although his completion percentage in the past in the last six games that he played after injury were different than the first six games pre-injury, I think he played better as far as his progressions. Mm -hmm. It's like his season has only been six games long. Right. His preseason was six games. Yeah. You know what I mean? As far as Allen yeah. goes. So people will say, I think falsely say, that he's got 12 games under his belt. While he does have 12 NFL speed games under his belt, that the last six are what I really count. Well, he even admitted that going, playing, stopping, and then coming back was a big thing for him. Because it allowed him to go, experience it, come back, and then learn. Right and have something that to relate to, and that's one thing that I think all athletes need is they need the ability to to relate to what's happening. Here's what I'm curious about, though. The thing that gets me about Allen. Mm. If you had to measure one to ten, ten being the highest, what was the pressure on Allen last year to win? Oh God, four. I, mean, I would say less than that. Yeah, I would say two. Yeah. Now, wide receivers. Offensive line, mm -hmm. Derek Anderson, Ken Dorsey, mm -hmm. all of these pieces. You're you are the centerpiece of this franchise. Yeah. All these pieces are coming in to help you. Mm -hmm. Pressure mounts. Yeah, it goes up. Now he's been a kid who's always welcomed pressure. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that has any kind of adverse effect on the kid going into year two. So you're concerned they might be trying to help him too much. No, 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 no. You're never going to get any kind of complaint about someone trying to help a kid too much. I think last year he had zero pressure to win. None. He didn't, they didn't care if he won or not. Just learn. Now, you add it. You're, he didn't have any wide receivers. They didn't rebuild, rebuild the line. Dorsey was not there. Uh, they were still trying to find concepts that were going on. Now, you're going to have your offensive concepts going into camp. You're going to have all these weapons at wide receiver. You're going to have all these offensive linemen to, guard, to ha help you. You sign a veteran in Frank Gore to try to mature you along to see what to look for in the league. Um, you know, I mentioned Dorsey. You, you got Air Anderson there. You know what I mean? You're going to have all of these pieces are designed for you to be successful. Mm -hmm. You have to be successful. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder if that type of pressure, listen, we brought all of these things in for you. Mm -hmm. You should be, now, falsely a fan might say, you should be thrown for 300 every game. Well, it's not in the game, what's in the game plan. Well, I mean, you look at it, you know? Eli Manning threw for 4,000 last year, and the Giants were terrible. And yeah, they because they were horrible. Because they were horrible. they were horrible. Yeah, but they had, one of the most, they had one of the most successful running backs. That's why he was able to throw for 4,000, because they all understand. focused on Barkley. I understand. But the point being is that, will the pressure have any kind of effect on Allen in 2019? Because everything is set up for him to be successful. It's a tough one. And you know, nothing you, in 2018 was set up to be successful. No, I... I mean, it was a pretty bad squad last year. Yeah. And it was constantly changing. Yes. You know, like the receivers at the beginning of the season weren't even the receivers at the end of the season. No, no. Like, you know. So you pick up I'm, Isaiah McKenzie and, and Foster finally came into his own. Mm -hmm. Zay Jones probably, you know, did all right. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's interesting to see. Everything is tailored, is set up for this kid to be successful. Yeah. I wonder, because I always worry about that, those little things behind the scenes. I wonder if that pressure will affect Allen. You know, I don't know because you look at what they brought in and these are all the 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 room is different. It's not guys who who made a football team, it's guys who picked this football team now. Right? So I think the pressure is a little bit different. You look at that offensive room and it's a lot of guys who they didn't just get drafted here and they're here until their contract expires. Yeah. There's a lot of guys who just got added that this is where they want to be now. Mm -hmm. This is they see what is what is ahead for this franchise, and they and they want to be here. So mm -hmm. the room is very different. You look at Brown and Beasley. Beasley, I mean, I don't think I don't think a player has brought themselves to the fans as well as Beasley has brought himself to the fans yeah. almost immediately. Fans immediately loved him. Yeah, because they said he had a chance to uh, choose between the Patriots and Cowboys. He said, I just... "Yeah, I want to be here." Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. I think the dynamic of the room is very different. Last year it was guys who happened to be here. It's not that anymore. No, no, I understand that. I, I completely understand that point of it. I just I just don't know if the pressure on the kid, because he didn't have any, so he was able to play loose last year. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's going to take that same mentality into this year where he's, he's going to try to make every throw perfect. It doesn't have to be. He's going to try to... Um, 
to do X, Y, and Z. Listen, man, I just hope he worked on a changeup over the over the winter. He time. had a changeup because I still firmly believe this to my very core. He was still hurt when he came back. Yeah, I. I he threw some that. fastballs. I'm not gonna say he didn't. I don't think he was really. I don't. Th I think he was hurt because he threw. I mean, he had a couple touch passes that were really good. The touchdown to. Um, yeah, but he had some that were just just bad. I mean, just bad. Do you remember that one that he threw into the stratosphere on a, on a swing pass to McCoy? Was that before or after the injury? That uh, was after the injury. Yeah, well, you know. They're not all perfect. I get it. But he saw, the, he saw the linebacker bearing down on him. Oh, whatever. It was a business Oh, stop, decision. stop making excuses. <laughs> no, it's, that's the thing for me with Allen is that I want to see him be able to understand depth on the field. And he was still throwing things at 100 miles an hour for you know a lot of the season i would like to see him understand field depth a little bit more as, as you know with his arm strength Drill i hope him, that's man. i hope that's you know that's what he worked on this season because he's got a lot of the skills that you look for they've built enough of a team around him to be able to support him despite what his decisions are going to be on the field and i think that's sort of an interesting philosophy is that the bills are able to mitigate whatever josh allen does with the talent that they've surrounded him with you know i find very unique what that's a great point by the way the offensive line that they built mm. are guys that you don't have to worry about up here. Yep. They're guys that physically they're not like the free agents that we mentioned before. But you don't have to work on anything up here. Look at the guys that they draft. They are guys that are physical specimens right. but need to work up here. Mm. It's just an interesting dynamic of what you're going to surround, the type of chemistry you're going to have. Now, Beasley, smart football player. Mm -hmm. Brown, he was with Arians for a couple of years. So, mm -hmm. I think he still, he gets it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he gets what, the, what teams are trying to do. It's funny how they're trying to weave this team together. They're, they're drafting physical specimens who may not be as highly regarded because of their IQ, yet you sign free agents that are all IQ. Right. Well, it protects, you know, it's, it's the ultimate potential versus production. You know, like that's... That P word. Yeah, it's that evil P word. Potential. But that's what they're doing. They're drafting guys who have a huge boom potential because they, they're they protected at the position. If you surround them by the right pieces. Yeah, that's it.